So before I begin this video, I want to preface it by saying that I don't relish the unnecessary killing of animals. That being said, overpopulation and threats to public safety sometimes require us to reduce animal populations in order to restore balance to the ecosystem. Now, try to imagine a world where humans and dinosaurs coexist. Would we see herds of hadrosaurs destroying crops as wild boar do in Texas? Or maybe your livestock are being picked off by raptor attacks. This video attempts to guess at what weapons would be appropriate for stopping different sizes of dinosaurs in order to ensure that they are put down quickly and humanely and that your life is protected. If you were anything like me, at least once, you were drifting off in class to the drone of your teacher's voice, and you imagined what life would be like if dinosaurs made up our ecosystem. How would our lives change? Would they become an integral part of our lives or a nuisance? Would we love them or fear them? Picture this. Your name is Farmer Joe, and you're tending to your herd of hadrosaurs when suddenly they become agitated. Cresting the horizon is a Tyrannosaurus, fully grown and steadily approaching your pasture. You recognize the animal as that good-for-nothing varmint that ate your puppy and halved your yield last season. But you don't panic, because in the back of your Ford F-150's granddad's trusty double barrel, you load some buckshot into that sucker and... Wait, will that be enough? You go back to the truck and pull out granddad's trusty BFG 9000. That's the spice. You ride off to confront the wrecks like John Marston meets the Doomslayer. Will you survive? What will you use to protect your family's livelihood? On a serious note, what would it take to kill a T-Rex? What might be perfect and what might even be overkill? In this video, we'll do some research to let you know the answer. After all, this is very useful information, and I'd be surprised if you find this information to have absolutely no practical use in real life. Let's go. Well, the first thing we have to think about, what are some examples of guns used for hunting today? What are some dinosaur-like animals or animals of similar size to dinosaurs? Let's go back to the Great Emu War of 1932. After World War I, retired Australian soldiers were given large tracts of land to farm in Western Australia. However, they noticed that the lands were infested with thousands of emus. Worried the birds would destroy their crops, the farmers declared war. However, even with the help of the Australian military, the farmers only managed to kill off a few hundred birds. And after moral unrest stirred, efforts to kill them stopped. And the Great Emus won the Great Emu War. No kidding, look it up. But what worked to kill the birds? Emu are descendants of the dinosaurs bearing many physical similarities and stemming from the dinosaur cladogram. We can make some assumptions about dinosaurs of similar size when we look at what it took to kill the birds. The farmers, aided by the military, employed Lewis machine guns, which were machine guns chambered in 303 British. When they actually managed to hit the damn things, they were quite effective at stopping the birds. What does this mean? We know with certainty that the 303 caliber, as well as rounds close to that in power and all rounds higher, can stop similarly sized dinosaurs. I can assume that, to kill any large raptor, small herbivore, or ornithomimid, these calibers would suffice. Obviously, these rounds can kill anything smaller too. Well, what about larger dinosaurs like hadrosaurs and ceratopsians? This is where we begin to run out of real-life examples. A large hadrosaur like Lambiosaurus is almost the size of an elephant, and Triceratops outclasses the elephant in weight by a long shot. Poachers in Africa use whatever they can get their hands on, and the most common gun worldwide is the AK-47. Poachers most commonly use these weapons, chambered in 7.62x39, to take down large prey like buffalo, rhinos, and elephants. We know that the 7.62 bullet is capable of killing large animals, but is it the best? A variety of elephant guns are made to take down especially sizable prey. These rounds blow through thick skin and flesh, perfect for large dinosaurs. They range from 450 Nitro Express all the way up to 585 and have no issue killing large prey. Although it can be done with a smaller caliber, I would recommend no less than a 450 Nitro Express weapon to humanely kill a large dinosaur. Causing an animal needless pain by shooting it multiple times only for it to slowly bleed out is cruel. AK-47s and similarly sized weapons could kill dinosaurs, but not as surely or effectively as larger ones. Now what about giant dinosaurs? Dinosaurs that outclass every land animal on the planet in weight and power. We're talking giant theropods, huge herbivores, and sauropods. Real quick, let's talk about what dinosaur skin was like. We've gone through many iterations of speculative dinosaur art every time a new discovery is made. Bipedal lizards, to athletic bipedal lizards, to oversized turkeys, to walking meat bags. But based on the information we have today, what was dinosaur skin really like? We can guess that it varied from species to species, as well as size. However, I have a short answer for T-Rex at least. We have fossils of T-Rex skin impressions, and they look like this. Scaly. Evidence suggests that early basal tyrannosaurs may have had feathers, but that more modern tyrannosaurs had smooth, scaly skin. 
Do we know if they had plumage in other areas or not? Not necessarily, but we do know with almost certainty that they had scaly skin. What does this mean? A tough hide for defending attacks. Probably thicker and tougher than large mammal skin. We're gonna need big bullets. Let's go back to the notion that you can kill dinosaurs with lower than appropriate calibers. Although it's possible, it might take quite a few shots and a lot of unnecessary suffering. However, with the giant class dinosaurs, there's likely a chance that your life or the lives of others are on the line and that you will need a weapon that will kill your target when you pull the trigger. When the blood is pumping and you're being charged by a 20,000 pound triceratops, you best be sure that whatever comes out the barrel of your, at this point, anti-material rifle stops the thing dead in its tracks. You can't afford the time to place a careful shot. So we know that elephant guns effectively put down elephant-sized animals. A 450 Nitro Express through 585 will kill a Triceratops if you hit it in the right place. And if you don't, you might pay for it with your life. So let's divide the types of shots you'll be taking into two categories, hunting and defending. Hunting shots are methodical, well-placed shots into vulnerable areas like the brain and the heart. Defending shots are reactionary and often unexpected, where an animal is charging you and you have seconds to pop off around. For the hunting category, 450 and anything higher is likely lethal to vulnerable areas. If you see a giant dinosaur like a T-Rex and it's unaware of your position, you can line up a shot on the brain or heart and you will kill it with a high power round. I would recommend a semi-automatic 50 caliber rifle in case the first shot isn't lethal. The 50 is especially useful at longer ranges with its high powder load and it's classified as an anti-material rifle, used to destroy enemy equipment and vehicles. If this is not enough to kill the animal in one shot, well, I'd be disappointed and a bit terrified of whatever's in front of me but it's time to transition to the defending stage. At this point, a gigantic animal is charging you, and you're pretty damn sure you're about to die. Your elephant gun didn't do the trick. You need something bigger. Gun Jesus from Forgotten Weapons showed off the Double Deuce, a weapon designed to put down a huge charging animal in one shot. It shoots 25 millimeter rounds, a size commonly used in cannons. Not only does this weapon have tremendous recoil, but it means destruction for anything on the other end of the barrels. This is a weapon designed not just for the death, but for the obliteration of your target. This gun is pretty impractical because of how heavy it is, coupled with the physical injuries that might be sustained by using it. Some other examples of ridiculous guns that could probably kill a giant dinosaur include the PTRD-41, a Soviet-era 14.5 by 114 anti-tank rifle, and the Vickers QF gun, a British 40mm light artillery piece. Now you can always go bigger, but these weapons are capable of being carried on foot and can be quickly deployed to stop a charging dinosaur. If the first shot doesn't kill the thing, I would at least expect it to stop charging due to the severity of the impact. At that point, load another round and put the creature out of its misery. So what are some key takeaways from this video? Well for one, it's not a huge exaggeration when video games portray dinosaurs as bullet sponges. If your gun isn't working, you probably need a bigger one. And if you talk to my hunters out there, they'll tell you that a good hunter makes humane kills. After all, the animal at the end of the barrel is only a creature trying to make it past another day. And when you decide it's fate, you gotta do it with respect. At the end of the day, you look at your farm and think to yourself, it ain't much, but it's honest work.